I'm Kimberly Ferguson Walter with the Laboratory of Advanced Cybersecurity Research, and I'll be presenting our paper on examining the efficacy of decoy based and psychological cyber deception. We'll start with some background concepts. A deceptive defender can take advantage of the attacker's trust in what they observe and experience while hacking. This helps level the playing field. Cyber deception techniques range from simple solutions, such as low interaction decoys, to complex ones, such as fake users and network traffic. The analysis in this paper is from a human subjects research study that used low interactive decoys, which means they were most realistic during network reconnaissance and were never intended to be truly exploitable or logged onto. Cyber psychology methods were used in the study when participants were told that deception might exist on the target network, regardless of whether or not it was really in use. Our goal was to provide rigorous measures of effectiveness for cyber and psychological deception. For the Tularosa study, 138 professional red teamers participated in a full-day penetration test on identical copies of a test network with 50 emulated target machines. The test was performed on provided Kali Linux laptops ensuring all participants had access to the same set of standard cyber attack tools. Task instructions provided a backstory, motivation, and ground rules. In order to elicit real-time data collection on attack behavior and attacker perception, participants were provided with a separate internet-connected laptop for real-time reporting to fictitious teammates. Participants were split into four conditions in, with, in which both the actual presence of decoys and the explicit mention of deception were controlled. Participants in present conditions had 25 Windows decoys and 25 Linux decoys added to their network. Participants in informed conditions were told that they there may be deception on the network. In this paper, we use data from the Tularosa study to examine these hypotheses. H1, cyber and psychological deception impede cyber attackers. H2, cyber deception tools are effective even if an attacker is aware of their use. H3, cyber deception is effective if the attacker merely believes it may be in use, even if it's not and H4, cyber and psychological deception affects an attacker's cognitive and emotional state. The data analysis presented in this paper mostly emphasizes H1 and H2. Our data sources include network and host data, decoy alerts, which served as a tripwire for four different types of attack activity, OCR, and qualitative self-report data. Data were non-normal and appropriate statistical tests were used. Qualitative data was reviewed by two subject matter experts. Capture the flag procedures are a common scoring criteria for cyber events. Tularosa was not a CTF. Collection of flags may increase speed and ease of judging success, but can provide faulty extrinsic motivation, skewing the human behavior we desire to study. Allowing participants to decide what they deem reportable reveals what they perceive as important. This is one of the many internal versus external validity trade-offs that was made during the experimental design. You can see some of our other papers for more details. Red teamers were also used as a proxy for hackers, which may be the closest population available for a controlled study of this nature, but also incurs some ecological validity limitations. Of course, with deception, the attacker's perception of success may not reflect true progress towards their goal. This paper focuses on data analysis looking at several measures of success. We report reduced forward progress through the cyber kill chain, resources wasted on decoys, and altered perception. We'll highlight a few examples in this talk, but for more details, please read the paper. The measures of success can be considered from both the attacker and defender perspectives. Although there were no active defenders in the Tularosa study, impeded or delayed attacker forward progress results in strategic gains for the defender. Wasted attacker resources and delayed forward progress leads to increased effort and resources required to attack. Altered attacker perception, the difference between reality and deception, and presenting misinformation to the attacker can help obscure and protect defender resources. This graphic displays the results supporting H1, that defensive cyber deception tools and psychological deception impede attackers who seek to penetrate computer systems and exfiltrate information. It's an attempt to give you an idea of how much more is included in the paper than we have time to talk about in this talk. Here's a similar graphic for the results supporting H2, that defensive deception tools are effective even if an attacker is aware of their use. Next, we'll walk through the details for a few examples. 
The eternal blue exploit was the most prevalent exploit used in the study. These results indicate a significant difference across several phases of the cyber kill chain between participants in conditions where decoys were absent versus present. Those without decoys weaponized Eternal Blue more, delivered Eternal Blue to more real targets, and self-reported more successful Eternal Blue exploitations. These findings support hypothesis one, that the presence of decoys impedes attacker forward progress. Next, we'll look at target selection, which is a very human-driven part of a campaign that's ripe for defensive deception. Those informed of deception targeted significantly more decoys, indicating that information on deception did not impact decoy effectiveness, and were significantly less likely to use stolen domain admin account credentials for privilege escalation and lateral movement, indicating that information on deception reduced attacker forward progress. These findings support H2, that defensive deception tools are effective even if an attacker is aware of their use. Next, we'll look at examples of altered perception. These are snippets of real examples of the kind of qualitative data that was analyzed by our subject matter experts. Here we examined retrospective end-of-day reporting to determine if the participant perceived their performance on the task as a success or a failure. We noted a difference between reality and perception in the present informed condition. They reported even less failures than the control condition, but our forward progress analysis suggests that the control condition made the most progress on the task and this condition made the least. This suggests a self-serving bias was triggered in the present informed condition. The self-serving bias acts as an excuse for failure, thus alleviating personal responsibility. Being informed of the deception when the deception was present acted as an excuse for participants who no longer felt responsible for the failures and therefore reported failures less often. For the next analysis, our experts examined the end of day reporting to determine if participants perceived the network as secure or insecure. Examples of reasons a report was labeled secure include things like finding zero vulnerabilities and exploiting nothing. Examples of insecure include exploiting multiple hosts, gaining access to the domain controller, and obtaining admin credentials. Notice that the participants in the present uninformed condition describe the network as secure significantly more than the control condition. This could indicate another bias called the ambiguity effect. Ambiguity causes people to be unwilling to act, which for defenders would be a helpful effect to impart on cyber attackers. In conditions where decoys were present, they impeded progress and delayed participants. For the participants who were also uninformed, they had no explanation for the cause of these difficulties, leading to increased ambiguity. Now we'll begin to summarize our data findings. For H1, we had multiple data sources reporting impeded attacker forward progress and resources wasted due to cyber deception. And this supports the claim that cyber and psychological deception impedes attackers. These excerpts from participants' end-of-day reports help demonstrate the differences seen across conditions. So for the control condition, um, this participant, I eventually pwned everything, every single domain asset pwned. They had an easy time. In the present uninformed condition, there was a lot of frustration. I don't really think there's too much that is actually exploitable. So very different experiences. For H2, we have multiple data sources supporting impeded attacker forward progress, delayed progress, and altered perception. And this supports the claim that cyber deception tools are effective even if an attacker is aware of their use. Um, this participant said, I think I wasted a lot of time looking for the deception. So being aware of the deception uh, caused even more delay for them. For H3, cyber deception is effective if the attacker merely believes it may be in use, even if it's not. Observation suggests that a more realistic environment is necessary to retest the psychological deception condition. This is consistent with the results from a previous pilot study performed on an operational network. The test environment just doesn't offer enough of the natural messiness of a real operational network, which can provide plausible deniability for the false claim that deception is present. And yet there are examples of it working. 
this network was filled with deception and I spent the majority of the day going down rabbit holes that led me nowhere. And another, I believe there was very good defensive barriers and successful deception put into place in the network, which didn't allow me to obtain a single exploit. In this case, neither of them had deception on their network. And for H4, previous analysis had shown that deception measurably increased confusion and surprise in cyber attackers. We provided additional examples of altered perception, such as an ambiguity effect related to the security of the network and the self-serving bias. Here we have examples where in the control condition, everything seemed relatively straightforward, but in the present uninformed condition, there was extremely frustrating and somewhat confusing. So this provides further support that cyber and psychological deception affects an attacker's cognitive and emotional state. In conclusion, human decision-making is a critical but often overlooked component of cybersecurity and more human subjects research is needed. We showed that decoys are effective at impeding, detecting, and delaying cyber attacks. In fact, everyone in a present condition triggered a decoy alert prior to exploiting a real machine. This study employed low interaction decoys, but high interaction decoys or customized deception should show an even greater effect on attacker behavior. Some of our other work includes deception using AI to evolve and adapt to maintain an advantage over time. One main takeaway from our paper counters previous thinking that deception techniques must always remain hidden to be effective. A combination of the presence of and information about deception had the most effect on cyber behavior compared to the control condition in this case. Results also indicated that cognitive biases are prevalent in cyber attack behavior and can be induced to disrupt attacks. Our current work involves examining which cognitive biases are most relevant to cyber operations and designing new experiments to measure and trigger biases in cyber attacker behavior.